Hi everyone, just wanted to take a minute to talk a little bit about the volumes of pyramids and cones. So, uh, we're continuing on with volume, which again, as we said, was the amount of space taken up by a three-dimensional object. Um, and as we saw before with prisms and cylinders, it, it really kind of came down to the area of the base times the height. Now, what we end up doing, we have to be careful uh, when we move into cones and pyramids because we kind of have them peaking at the the apex or like a vertex at the top right um so we just have to be careful because it's not going to end up being just doing the height anymore because then you would end up with a prism um so to account for that you usually are going to be multiplying by a constant now where exactly these constants come from um can be found if you kind of if they're they're available to look at um online with some of their derivations um, we're not going to do them here for right now, but uh, they are able to be found uh, if you are looking for them. Now, let's take a look. So just to clarify, I realize I never said it. The volume of a pyramid is one third the area of the base times the height. So that is kind of that one third. If you think about it, it's almost like accounting for the fact that we're not going straight up anymore where we were with the prism. We're losing that section that's available. Um, Let's take a look. So we need to find that the volume is equal to the one third area of the base times the height. Now, we do luckily have the height and the base is, oh, that's really nice. Um, so area of the base is 25 times 12.5. I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but what do I know about 12.5? Well, that's just 25 over 2, which makes this 625 over 2, which is a much more sustainable and doable process. So this is just kind of things to think about when you're doing these problems. OK, so there's the base. Now we got to multiply this by the height of 23. and one third times 625 over two times 23. Um, well, 625, let's see, let's think about that. Is there anything we can really do with any of these? 23 doesn't simplify with anything. 625, we know it's fives. So no, unfortunately, this one is just one you would have to multiply. Um, anyway, so that would be over six. I don't know what 625, oops. I don't know what 625 times 23 is off the top of my head. Um, oh, 14,375. Um, it is doable. I could do it by hand, but that is a situation where I think you probably would want to just double check. Um, but ultimately, I'm okay with you leaving this as the answer, right? This is okay to do. Again, don't be afraid to leave the fractions. There are plenty of situations where dealing with the fractions makes things easier. In this case, nothing simplified, but as you saw up here, it did make the calculations a little easier. All right, now, a cone. It's, again, going to be that one-third feature. Um, it, it's basically like a third of the cylinder, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, and again, just like with the pyramid, there's there are proofs that exist of it. We're not going to do them right now, but they they do exist, and it is um, within the realm of things that you know if you looked for, you could find pretty easily. Okay, so it is one third the area of the base, which is the circle right here, pi r squared, times the height once again. So, oh, look, angles. It's like we're going to use trig. So here's what we need to figure this out. Well, we need the radius. Once we have the radius, we have the height. That uh, That's pretty clear that this is the height. So we, we have that. Um, but we do need to find the radius. Now, well, let's see. What do we got going on here? We have an opposite and an adjacent. Oh, so look at that. Tangent of 52 degrees is equal to 12 over the radius. So to solve for the radius, so we're going to 
end up switching the spots of these when you um, multiply both sides by r and then divide by tangent of 52. Um, so then you get 12 over tangent of 52. So now, see, this is a situation where you would be able to plug it in and figure it out from here. Okay, so that makes r about 9.4. Millimeters. Now, um, obviously, because you are rounding, this is a situation where, you know, depending on when and where you're rounding, um, sometimes, like, if you do it on delta math, it, it does make some different decisions along the way. Typically, if I am dealing with trig at this point, I will make the rounding here. And if the question is asking for a certain, you know, decimal place, make sure to follow that. Um, but anyway, from here, what we will do is we'll plug this into the area. So, well, we'll just find the volume right away. So we have one third the radius squared times pi times 12. Okay, so first off, right off the bat, the 12 and the 3 cancel. That just leaves me with a 4. All right, 9.4. Well, you already know that it's going to be close to the, in the 80s somewhere, probably close to 90s, 88.36 times pi. So when you multiply by 4, you're going to have 353.44 pi. Now, again, this is a situation where if it tells you to round to a certain place, um, you would. In this case, because I rounded here and I have this answer, I'm Probably just going to leave it close to here. Um, I believe usually they are looking for the tenth, so it would round to the point four. And again, you can just leave the pi. Don't feel the need to multiply by the pi. Um, millimeters cubed. Cube. There we go. Okay. So anyway, you can leave it like that, um, or you could totally turn it into a fraction. Since it does have a 0.4, you know you can end up with this over 5, right? So uh, depending on how you want to work with it um, and what the problem is looking for, you might have to round. But other than that, that is the process you will follow. So let me know if you have any questions, and have a great day.